Today I'm going to explain the mechanics of reselling to increase your average sale price. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to dig into the mechanics of reselling itself. How to get the most money. How to make more money than you are right this very minute. Now, I don't pay attention to a lot of numbers that other sellers do, like a sell-through rate or how many watchers I have or anything else like that, or views or impressions. Those types of information don't really mean much when you're selling vintage and collectibles. In those categories, the right person just has to be on. But I do pay attention to the average selling price of our items. That's basically just the average amount of every single item that you sell. Basically, to figure that out, you just add up all the items that you sold, you divide them by the amount of items that you sold, and that would be your average selling price on the platform, whichever platform you are on. Now, most sellers that I know do use and calculate that figure fairly regularly. What your goal would be to do as a reseller would be to increase that to as high as you can get that number. If you've got, say, an average of 10 or 15 bucks for all of the items in your store, you're probably not making much money. Now, if you've never looked at your average selling price, you may be in for a shock if you calculate it. I've actually run into a few sellers who had a really low number, meaning that they were working a ton of hours and getting almost nothing for a return on their investment. Now, back when we first started, our average selling price wasn't very high. It was like 20 bucks. We were selling clothing, lots of clothing. We were selling books, and we were selling video games and electronics, things like that routinely. And that was our average selling price. By the time we figured in uh, free shipping, which we used to do for clothing and some electronics, uh, the return rate was figured into that, all of that sort of thing. And it wasn't very high. Now, clothing, books, uh, video games, all of that type of item is considered the low-lying fruit. That's something that everybody out there has a level playing field of finding. You can get them at garage sales, thrift stores, flea markets, church sales, pretty much anywhere you can go. All of that type of thing is available. In big bulk, if you want it, you can buy out a whole garage sale or whatever the case may be, a state sale, a rummage sale, any of that sort of thing. It's available to everybody. It's the lowest-lying fruit. It's something that everybody can get. Now, for us, that's the same thing that we purchased. We purchased all the low-lying fruit, the stuff that was easy to get that was everywhere out on the market. But we were never able to greatly increase our average selling price. We had to buy more and more. It didn't increase the average selling price. What it actually did was increase the amount of sales that we had as well as the amount of work that we had. This is another reason why a lot of people struggle when they first start off. You've got a very low average selling price across the board. You're not making a lot of money. You're getting the stuff that's cheaper and easier to get right now as well. Same problem I had. Same problem many, many people out there have. For us, the best option to stop messing with the low-lying fruit, the stuff that's out there, was to find a specialized area that most other people weren't messing in. And that was a niche for us. We started with postcards and other things like that and did extremely well. Through time we've learned it, we've actually picked up other niches. And with niches, one of the biggest aspects of it is the average selling price across all of our niches is extremely high because we routinely sell 75, 100, 200, $300, $400, $500 items in those niches. Now, obviously, it takes knowledge. It's going to take time to do that. But if you're still fighting over the low-lying fruit and struggling, that's a big reason why. You've also got the same amount of competitors selling the exact same items you run into online as well. So when you're on eBay, you're competing against the same people that you're actually purchasing against as well. Now, one of the biggest dangers as well with the low-lying fruit, with clothing, video games, and all that, is that it could be vero'd at any given time. We've had stuff shut down on us, even recently video games on Amazon and things like that where I can't sell them anymore. There are many items on eBay and that list is growing day by day. And again, that's all low-lying fruit. Collectibles or niches, niches specifically, are usually older items for us. So we avoid any of those Vero's or copyrights or any of that sort of thing when we're selling them. A lot of the items that we are selling are old enough where there is no technical copyright on it. 
where there is nobody to claim anything on it. It's vintage enough. It can't be confused with modern day items. So there's no way that you could mix them up with what's current and selling right now. The prices we get for them are far greater than we ever got as an average selling price with books, video games, and definitely clothing. And we did okay with clothing, don't get me wrong. There's easy way to make a living on clothing. But for us, it was twice as much work as we are doing right now for half or less the amount of profit you have to take in the account that clothing you usually have to pay more for stuff than I pay for our stuff or you would pay for a lot of the vintage items far too many people don't know what vintage stuff is or what it's worth so they price it dirt cheap thinking it's not worth something but everybody knows what an Xbox is worth or most people do most people know what the games cost they bought them for their kids and things like that so there isn't as much room in all the low-lying fruit to actually make that larger percentage of profit as I said we played with all of those sorts of things. We did the drive arounds to garage sales. I did every flea market around here. I did every estate sale I could get to. Any garage sale that had anything of interest, I would go to. I'd be driving all over the place. I'd be spending a ton of time, a ton of effort, gas, everything else to get random, hopefully decent items. And my average selling price still didn't go up very much at all with all of that extra work, all of that effort putting into it. Once we got into niches, the $18, $20 average selling price went up to $30, then $40, then $50, and it's risen ever since that point. That's what your goal should be, to get the stuff up on the next level, to get the stuff up that's going to routinely sell for far better profits. The return on the investment is what you were looking for. I would far rather sell the things that most other people aren't selling because it means that I will get a higher profit margin and I won't have the competition to buy it and I won't have the other competition to sell it. Now trying to find niches doesn't mean you just cut off all other purchasing. It means you still go out and buy the normal things that you can find to keep your business rolling but you center in on some things. You try to dig up just those types of items and learn all you can about them. The goal would be to know more than everybody else in your area about the niches that you are selling. That way you can cherry pick from everybody else, all the other sellers, all the other places you go to. You can scoop out the best stuff out of there because they just aren't aware on what's the good stuff and what's the bad stuff. Large chunk of what we sell, most people don't mess with. They think it's just junk, small, tiny items that don't carry a big value. Like, let's say, vintage Star Wars figures. Most people don't know the difference between, say, a $5 vintage 70 Star Wars figures and a $150 version of a Star Wars figure. That's the difference. Those are the types of information information, the types of knowledge you need to get that will give you a far better boost than you've had selling clothing like everybody else is doing. I would rather specialize in niches. So I'm only competing against one or two other people with basic knowledge in the things that I sell versus every single other reseller out there with a phone that can just look up or pick up anything out there. With a niche, you can't just look up information on your phone. You've got to literally know some aspects about the niche that you're in. So that's where your investment comes into these sorts of things. If I didn't switch over from clothing to what we're selling now, niches and vintage paper, records, music, collectibles, movie-related stuff, toys, I would be stuck right now. There aren't many places open or running sales because of the pandemic, for one. And the competition for all of that type of material is horrendous right now because so many people are out of work. So that is a huge factor. The amount of people selling the same thing on eBay is horrendously up. But for those selling niches, there isn't that competition. You can't just jump in and instantly do it. So we have been saved for this. And another good reason why my sales are still running at fourth quarter sales is because of that. There's no real way for you to instantly get this knowledge. So you're not a competitor to me unless you start to dig in and gain that knowledge. So if you want to be better, you want to increase your average selling price of all of your items you've got to know more than everybody else you've got to specialize in something you've got to step away from the pack and not be out there fighting for the same thing everybody else is buying and selling as well so you're getting hit two different ways you're getting hit when you go to buy it and you're getting hit when you go to sell it because there's just so much competition with niches as well you're probably dealing with a tenth 
only a tenth of all of the competition that everybody else is dealing with, with clothing, with books, video games, and electronics, because there's so many people out there selling it. In some categories, there's so many people out there selling it right now that the price has dropped immensely on a lot of used goods, because there's just so much of it out there right now and so many people listing it. With vintage and stuff, as I said, you've got to know something. So that hasn't happened in the vintage category. I check them, I sell them, I know how many listings are there. Those numbers haven't increased. But anywhere else in the new stuff, the low-lying fruit areas, it's increased immensely, the amount of competition. That's why, again, a lot of people are having trouble with sales or they're getting low-end offers because there's so many people fighting to get to the bottom to sell their items right now. So where do you want to be? Do you want to be the person that's selling what everybody else is doing? Or do you want to specialize in something and get a higher return on your investment and increase your average selling price of all of your items? That should be your goal, raising your ROI. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Introduces the woman of the year, Ms. Pac-Man. Just like the arcade classic, four different game screens, floating fruit, even pretzels. Reach for Ms. Pac-Man. Reach for Ms. Pac-Man. Reach for Ms. Pac-Man.